So in, in this short video, we will take a look at configuration, basic configuration on iOS, Cisco iOS XR. So before we get started, let's just take a look at some of the basics. So these are the basics that I will run um, when starting on iOS XR machine. So I would like to see what are the images that are installed. We call them pies. And this is similar to the show version that we are used to in uh, iOS images. And then the show IP interface brief, it works the same way it works on iOS uh, nodes. And then for the configuration, when I start configuring, you don't have to write configuration terminal, just conf should be enough. I'll start with something very simple. So configuring the host name, for example. So let's call this XRV R1. And then with iOS XR, you have to commit your configuration before it becomes effective. So here, as we committed, you can see that the host name has immediately changed to XRV R1. Let's try to change it. So let's call it ASR 9K, for example. And the few tips here, you can see what is being changed. As you, you type show commit change diff, you can see what's been removed and what's been added to the configuration. This is very useful, actually. And then you can obviously see the configuration itself before you commit it. So very often when I commit, I will commit with a timer and this gives me some sort of safety uh, and insurance. So in iOS, when you commit or when you type in the configuration, when you enter the configuration, it is committed. And sometimes you actually end up losing the box or creating an issue. But with the commit confirm, I allow the box to roll back on the configuration. So worst case scenario, I may lose the box for a minute or seconds if I configure it to do so. And then the configuration basically rolls back. So here I have committed the, config the configuration with um, roll back timer of one minute. So within one minute, that one minute, if I see that nothing happens, I can go ahead and commit. And if I don't touch anything, it will essentially roll back to what it was before. So here I can see, I can keep an eye on the uh, configuration just for the purpose of showing you what happens. The show configuration commit list shows you all the configurations that have been pushed uh, onto this box and committed. Just let's wait a few seconds um, until we go over the one minute. As you can see there, my configuration has rolled back and the host name has changed from ASR9K to what it was before XRVR1. So let's try to configure host name once more. And if you, if in production, if you go ahead and you confirm it for a minute and you see that you haven't caused an outage or something and you don't, you, you don't want to lose that configuration, just go ahead and commit straight away. And then you do commit or show configuration commit list to see all the configuration with the labels. And then you can actually dive in into the actual configurations by putting in the labels. So by typing show configuration commit changes and the label, you can see what has been configured. This is also very useful and handy when you come to troubleshoot and see what some of your colleagues have been configuring before and so forth. You can also roll back if needed. So you can either put which configuration label you want to roll back or maybe you want to roll back to the last one 
with a sequence. So how far back do you want to go back? So keep an eye on the host name and he's rolling back and he has changed from ASR9K to XRVR1. So now let's try to configure the interface, one of the interfaces. You notice that when you put an RP address, you have to be specific and write RPv4 address. And then when it comes to the subnet, you either write it the way you write in it for, you used to for iOS uh, devices, or you can just put a slash 31, which is also very handy uh, in, in this case. And then it, as you can see, when I see what I'm committing, I can see that I'm adding an IP address. I'm comfortable with that, so I just commit it. So just for this kind of demo purpose, I would also like to configure the iOS device and test my ping from the iOS XR and vice versa. So here we're back to the normal iOS nodes that we are used to. And here we definitely have to use the config terminal as opposed to just config hostname as we normally do. And then we configure our interface. So I'm using a slash 31, two IP addresses. This is good practice for point to point. I'm old school the way I save my config. And then see if we can ping across. Then let's play a little bit with CDP. As you can see, CDP doesn't work off the box. You actually have to enable it in global mode on the uh, XR node, which I have just done. And then obviously I have to commit. And it takes a bit of time before you start seeing the neighbors. Let's first just check. Um, yeah, we have to enable it first on the actual interface also. And what can we see from the iOS node? We don't actually need to configure it here. Let's just do show CDP neighbor quickly. And we can see our XR node. And then go back to the XR node and check if we can see the CDP neighbor. So let's give it some time. Let's just explore what commands are actually available. So still looking for some sort of um, counters, but I think traffic would be the best um, option for us here. So here I can see I am advertising, I am also getting an input. So we should have CDP neighbors working or displayed on both uh, nodes. And there, there you have it, it's working as expected. I hope you found this short session informative. And if you want to see more of this type of um, demos specific for iOS XR, please let me know in the comments below and I'll try to push some more configuration examples. Thank you for watching.